Good afternoon. Welcome to EduSat Network. Friend, you know this week we have organized a series of lectures on oceanography and today we will start with the ocean waves. In today's lecture, we will try to understand the uh, definition of ocean wave, how it is formed, the various uh, properties of it and the various factors and characteristics. We will try to understand the ocean wave characteristic and life cycle also. And for discussion on this very topic, we have in the studio Dr. A. Sirikes. He is Associate Professor in Center for Study of Regional Development in Jawaharlal Nehru University, a premier university of the country. And Dr. Sirikes has written a number of books on climate change and resource management, a number of articles published in different national and international journals. So I think his knowledge will help us to understand this topic and give a kind of guidance how to study the ocean waves. So on your behalf, I welcome him for the research lecture on this very topic. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, I am going to talk on ocean waves. Uh, I am sure all of you are aware about oceanography, the science which deals with the study of oceans. Uh, the one of the important uh, aspect one should know about the oceans is that waves which generate. The ocean gives its gets its characteristics from the waves which generate, and most of the properties or uh, dynamics of the ocean is depending on the waves which are generated and dissipated within the ocean basins. Today, I would like to discuss on the uh, definition of ocean waves, what are the major properties of uh, ocean waves, how these uh, ocean waves are affected by different factors or controlled by different factors what are the different typology of waves, how they can be classified and once this ocean waves are formed, how they are dissipated or transformed till the end of the cycle. That is the uh, content of the today's discussion. Let us look what is what is an ocean wave. See, we know that ocean surfaces are always on the move. This movement is caused by the wind which is blowing over the surface of the oceans. The surface layers of the ocean is, is on continuous movement and they are sold in response to the wind which is blowing over it. Hence, ocean surface is a surface which is continuous in motion. There is always instability conditions in the ocean surface. That means unstable conditions are existing because of the wind which is blowing on over the surface of it. And this wind uh, which is having a, a frictional drag effect on the ocean surface. The ocean surface which is having, otherwise it is a flat surface, is dragged by the wind which is blowing above that. So there is a difference, there is a difference in density between the air layer and the ocean water layer. That means the ocean surface is overlaid by a layer of atmospheric air and that there is a difference in density between these two layers which, uh, which also helps in formation of the ocean waves. Now, if you see the classic definition of waves, it is a rhythmic movement that carries energy through matter or space. So, in any field of science, wave is considered as a rhythmic movement which carries energy through mass or through matter or through the space. So, there is a medium in which the, uh, the rhythmic movement is taking place. In contrast, in oceanography, the waves are rhythmic undulating uh, motion over a sea surface or an ocean surface. And these movements are created by wind. Uh, they are a regular up and down progressive motion of sea surface affected by the passage of the wind. That means, the, there is an up and down movement that is taking place uh, over the sea surface when the wind passes through the surface. Now, this wind which is blowing over the ocean surface creates ripples 
or waves of different intensities and and different in heights uh generally the waves can be classified into two parts one is the crust part which is the highest part of the wave which is found above the base level above the general sea level and the other part is the trough in case of oceans it is the lowest part of the wave where uh, the what the water surface is going below the general level of the sea surface now look at the properties of a wave has wave height wave length and wave period this can be uh, the wave height is the vertical distance between the crust and the trough if you see a wave it has a horizon portion it has a low, lower portion and the vertical distance between these two locations is the wave height uh, the on the other hand the wave length is the horizontal distance between a between a crust of a one wave and the crust of an adjacent adjacent wave or it is the trough of one wave and the distance to the adjacent trough so it is the the horizontal distance between either crust or trough of a wave on the other hand important point which we one should know about the wave is that wave period that is the time required for the wave crust or trough to move from one point to the other point that means if you refer to a particular point what is the time it takes for one moment that is one wave to move or pass through a point that means the entire length of the wave need to pass through that particular point of reference and time it takes to move through that particular point of reference is known as the wave period now the other concept associated with the wave is the wave frequency in wave frequency what we measure or we account for is the number of waves complete waves that means it consists of one trough and one crust full crust so that is the, uh, the one length of wave and that is the entire or one full oscillation that the, uh, that occur over a period of time that means the number of complete waves for a given time period occurs in a particular point is called as the wave frequency normally we express this wave frequency in terms of cycles per second how many number of waves are passing through a particular point in a particular time period here it is the in seconds and the fifth concept about the wave is that of wave amplitude the amplitude is the half height of the wave that means the distance from the mean wave level either to the crust or to the trough of the wave is known as the wave amplitude so these are the important points one should know about the waves now let's look at this picture the 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 figure given uh, figure given here gives you the glimpse of the wave ocean wave on the top we have this wave length that is the distance between the crust one crust to the adjoining crust and you can see on the middle the wave height that is the distance between the trough and the crust locations and on the other hand if you look at the circular portion of the or the cycle portion of that wave crust 
shown in arrows in a circle that shows the movement of water particles in a ocean wave. Here what it expresses is that the water particles are not displaced because of the wave ocean waves. What happens is that the energy and wave form is transformed from one location to the other location whereas the uh, water particles are circulated at the same location because of the movement of the energy from one location to another in the wave form. So, what we need to understand here is that the movement of ocean waves is not actually displacing the water particles within the or water particles that are involved in the waves and the water particles are circulated within the, the crust region or the cycle region of the wave forms. So, here it also depicts the, the wave trough region on the lowest point denoted by a circle and also the highest point in the upward moving portion which is called the wave crust. Uh, we will come back to this figure again later when we talk about uh, wave motions in detail. Now let us look at what are the controlling factors of waves. There are about four major controlling factors which decides the wave pattern in ocean. One is wind velocity, second is uh, wind duration, third is fetch and fourth factor is state of the ocean or sea. Let us look at each of these factors. One is wind velocity. The increase in velocity increases the wavelength, uh, wave period and height. Here wave velocity or wave celerity is influenced by wind velocity. Higher the wind velocity higher will be the ink, uh, length of the waves, higher will be the period of the waves and higher will be the height of the waves. So, basically the speed or velocity of the wind decides the size and form of the waves that are formed in oceans or seas. Second factor which is influencing the wind is the sorry wave is the wind duration. Whether wind is happening within a short duration or there is a persistent wind which is occurring over a long period of time. This in turn decides the persistence of ocean waves or continuance of ocean waves in an area. Whether a series of waves are formed in a continuous uh, pattern is decided by the persistence of wind conditions over the sea surface and its wind velocity. Now, the third factor which is affecting the uh, wind is the fetch. The fetch is determined by or fetch can be explained as the area in which the ocean waves are formed and that is decided by the area over which storms or wind are formed and wind are blowing over the ocean surface. So, in, in turn the fetch determines the extent of ocean waves influence or zone of influence of ocean waves. Higher the extent of wind affected area or storm affected area in an ocean surface, the fetch area will also will be larger. That means in ocean surfaces the fetch area determines the persistence of uh, ocean waves. The longer the ocean fetch area longer will be the duration of waves and higher will be the effect of waves in that area. Now, the last but not the least factor that is deciding the uh, wave pattern and form in an ocean is the state of the sea or ocean and the state of sea in, uh, in turn influenced by the turbulence prior to the onset of a wave or prior to the onset of wind conditions over the ocean surfaces. That means, uh, if, the, if the ocean 
is under calm conditions prior to the onset of uh, wind and consequent waves initially the velocities and formation of wind will be relatively of lesser intensity and duration and with the intensification of wind it will get intensified. On the other hand the sea is of turbulent nature then a different types of waves will be formed which will be more, uh, uh, more destructive or more uh, uh, turbulent in nature it will be. The ocean waves which are formed under the turbulent condition will be more destructive in nature. So, mainly these four factors controls the formation of uh, waves and its persistence over a sea surface. Now, let's try to let us look the classification that is possible based on the, the period of occurrence of ocean waves. Basically, there are about uh, seven types of waves that are formed on the ocean surfaces. Capillary waves, chops, swell, sage, these are basically the progressive waves and then comes another type of uh, waves like tsunamis, tide and the internal waves. First four types that are capillary waves. Chop, Sel or Seche are the waves that are generally called as progressive waves and they are formed because of the wind conditions in, over the ocean surfaces. On the other hand, the tsunami which is a type of wave, which is a wave which is formed by the disturbances in the ocean floor namely the earthquakes or other forms of turbulence that are happening within the or other tectonic activities that are happening in the ocean floor. And intensity of such disturbances decides the size, shape and intensity of tsunami waves. The tidal waves are the waves which are formed uh, because of the tide, uh, tidal variations or variations height of ocean surfaces which are under the uh, which, uh, which are under the influence of celestial bodies or celestial stars like sun and moons. And the last type of waves which are the internal waves which are formed inside the ocean uh, water bodies because of the density variations in the ocean waters. We will look into this little later. For first let us look at the progressive type of waves which are happening in the ocean surfaces. The most important them and the smallest of them is the capillary waves. These are the smallest waves which are for lesser in extent or shorter waves which are formed in the ocean surfaces. They are very short wave. Their lifespan is very short within seconds they dissipate. After the formation of this uh, capillary waves, they dis dissipate immediately out within seconds. And they are formed because of the breezes or very, very gentle winds which are blowing over the surface of the ocean waters. And normally this have periods less than 1 by 10th of a second. That means, in very short, very, very short spell, the capillary waves dissipates and the ocean, uh, this type of waves have length less than 2 centimeters. This gives you an idea how smaller is this capillary waves are. And generally, this type of capillary waves are formed because of the light local braces that are happening in an area. They are very shallow in, uh, in nature and found in very flat or a calm sea areas especially near to the uh, bay areas or enclosed sea areas this type of waves are found. The second type of wave is the chow which are generally formed locally. 
they are of a little longer duration than the capillary waves. They goes or uh, they have a duration about 1 to 10 seconds. That means the wave chop waves exist for, for about 1 to 10 seconds on the sea surface and the wavelength ranges from 1 to 10 meters which is larger than the capillary waves and they are formed either in shallow or deep seas in the nature. They are often caused by the local winds in contrast like the capillary waves. So, they, this choke and capillary waves are generally highly localized in formation and in, in extent. The third type of waves which we find, find in oceans are the swells. Uh, they are very regular movement of the ocean surfaces. They have a pattern of smooth uh, rounded waves over the ocean surfaces and the period is about 10 to 30 seconds. So, it is even less swells are less than even 1 minute duration. But the swells have a length in hundreds of meters unlike the chop or the capillary waves swells have uh, can have larger extent in area and uh, the, uh, it can be formed either in uh, deep sea or even in sh uh, shallow sea areas. And normally they, these swells are formed by distinct uh, storm events which are formed on the ocean surfaces. Unlike capillary waves and um, you know chop waves, this the uh, swells are influenced or formed by this distant storms which are formed in over a larger area. So, swells comes normally in a regular pattern. So, there is a, a follow uh, of uh, follow of different waves one after other in a swell formation because of the distant storm, storms which are persisting for longer periods. And the third uh, type of sorry fourth type of waves which we find is the sage, sage. These are the rhythmic back and forth oscillations that means in the wave there is a uh, instead of a progressive a movement here it is a back and forth oscillations which is similar to the oscillations which we observe in a bathtub or in a container. So, uh, there is lesser progressive uh, progression of the wave in this kind type of wave and they are uh, similar to a standing wave which is occurring in a body of water within a basin or within a container. So, it is it is a form of uh, looks like a standing wave. So, normally seeds are formed in any semi enclosed or enclosed seas like bays or other uh, such uh, semi enclosed locations have this type of waves formed. Their periods are much longer than other types of waves that can extend from 10 minutes to 10 hours. So, it is a very long duration waves, long period waves which are formed in the semi enclosed or closed ocean or sea areas. And uh, like uh, the period, the range of these waves are also very long. The length, wave length can go up to hundreds of kilometers and normally they are caused, caused by wind or it by the tsunamis or tidal resonances that are happening on the sea surfaces. Typically, uh, uh, very strong winds causes the siege or it can also be caused by the rapid changes in the atmospheric push. So, normally water is under the pressure from the atmospheric air. It try to push the water down and the, the tidal or the wind action of, uh, over the sea surfaces try to come back to or 
overcome this pr atmospheric pressure. So, you have a series of push and pull factors operating over the sea surface and such rapid changes in atmospheric pressure push water from one end of a body of water to another. So, within an enclosed body or enclosed bay region when the water is pushed from one end of the sea, uh, sea or ocean or bay to another end this type of seas are formed. So, there are two factors which or uh, three factors can influence such formation. So, it, this need to be noted down. The one is the ocean factor which is influencing, the other one is the atmospheric uh, pressure conditions also has an influence on the, the, the formation of seas. Uh, the following figure uh, shows the ideal wave spectrum which are formed in ocean surfaces. It starts from the smallest of the waves of capillary and ends with the tide. As you can see on the left of this uh, on your screen, it starts with the capillary waves. In this diagram, you can see uh, wave height is expressed on the y axis which is in a logarithmic scale and uh, wave period is expressed or down, uh, denoted in the x axis. And the waves ranging from capillary to tide are shown here. Uh, the shortest duration is on the left of your screen which is the capillary waves which is less than 0.1 seconds uh, with a very less amplitude or height of the wave followed by chop showing high variations in height in, in comparison with the capillary waves generally extending from 1 to 10 seconds. And then comes the swell which is having maximum um, wave height which is followed by says. Now, if you see these four types of waves are formed by or generated by wind conditions which are ranging from light wind conditions to strong wind conditions. So, in these four type of waves the generating force is basically the wind conditions which are existing and the wind speed condition determines the, uh, the amplitude or the uh, strength of the waves and hence the wave classification is in those terms which is decided by the, the wave height as well as the wave period which is the duration of existence of the wave over the sea surface. Then comes the spectrum which is influenced by other forces such as earthquakes which results in tsunami conditions where the amplitude can be very high up to 10 raised to 3 centimeters uh, to uh, tens of hundreds of meters in amplitude. And the last form of the wave which is formed in the ocean surface is the, the tide which is uh, basically due to the gravitational attraction of sun and moon which are occurring in uh, 10, 12 to 24 hour intervals in different parts of the area, uh, oceanic surf areas which are uh, which we can experience especially in the coastal areas. And because of this uh, tidal influence there are the low wave conditions and high wave conditions are formed in the ocean surfaces. Okay. So, this is a, a figure which we have seen is an ideal idealized ocean wave spectrum. Now, another classification can be based uh, another classification of the wave can be based on the, uh, the motion that is taking place over the ocean surfaces. That is whether the, the whether the form ocean forms are moving ahead or not. So based on that, based on the motion, uh, the or the movement of waves, the waves can be classified into progressive waves and stationary waves. In case of uh, progressive waves, uh, waves move forward across the sea surface. 
is basically uh, the wave form is moving across the sea surface whereas water particles are remaining stationary of the sea surfaces. So, this can be further classified into surface waves, internal waves or the tsunamis. So, these are the progressive waves which are moving ahead. The surface waves are the waves which are formed uh, on the surface of the sea, sea like the chop or capillary waves which we have seen earlier. And the internal waves are the waves which are formed inside the oceans and these are formed because of the density differences within the ocean uh, water column. As we go down the ocean depth, we find that the density of water, ocean water is increasing and this, uh, this, uh, this lead to a condition of uh, uh, pycnocline or the sudden increase in density with the depth of ocean column, water column. And this causes internal wave conditions within the ocean water body. And the third form is the tsunami which we already discussed earlier. And the, the second type of uh, wave is that stationary wave and these waves are formed be generally in closed oceans areas or semi enclosed ocean areas. The example is that uh, are sages because they are anchored to a point and it uh, gives you a back and forth uh, movement of what, uh, ocean or sea water surfaces. Hence, an onlooker it appeared to be a stationary wave that is occurring on the sea surface. Now, how these waves can be measured? There are different ways through which uh, waves can be measured. This, the, the basic or simplest of them is the simple observation method wherein we use a graduated pole and watch the rise and fall of the wave crust and wave trough against this graduated pole. For this we use a, a watch with a second handle so that the duration can be monitored or the time can be monitored over which the water or the wave front is moving up and down over the graduated pole. So normally this method is very tedious and relatively less accurate. So we, we have to use either pressure sensors or electrical device for the measurement of waves. And uh, the pressure sensors are the sensors which basically uh, influenced by the crust and uh, trough formation or the pressure variations near the water surface. When the, uh, when the crust are formed, the uh, water pressure will be high. When the troughs are formed, the pressure will be low. And this pressure variations on the water surface can or ocean surface can give uh, an idea about the amplitude of the crust or trough formed or the length of the uh, waves which are formed. Uh, the third uh, device is the electrical devices wherein the, the, the wave movement or the rise and fall in wave movements, it creates an electrical pul pulse by completing the circuit. So, in this device we, there will be an electrical circuit which will be completing its uh, uh, circuit when water crust is formed which enabled to complete the circuit. So, such uh, circuit completions are measured to determine the wave measurement. The fourth method of and the latest method of measuring a wave is that of satellites in which we, uh, we can use the radar sensors uh, which basically it is a time uh, radar pulses which are used to uh, uh, measure the variations in the sea surfaces. So, here we, what we are doing is the, uh, the time tagged uh, radar pulses uh, will be uh, uh, delayed if it is occurring uh, in from a trough area than that is occurring from a uh, crust area. So, this difference in time between the crust and trough for the uh, reflected radar pulse to reach the satellites is measured to determine the wave conditions. So, these are the different types of wave measure, uh, measuring techniques and the most modern uh, is the satellite uh, based measurement. 
The advantage of satellite based measurement is that it is it, it can be used to continuously monitor over the complete extent of the oceans of the world. So, it is relatively gives you a better uh, uh, view of, or with better measurement of the wave conditions on the sea and ocean surfaces. Now, let us look into the, uh, the cycle of ocean waves. What happens to the ocean uh, motions once it is formed? We have already discussed that um, ocean waves are the progressive waves because they move across the ocean surfaces. There are two types of uh, wave motion that is uh, possible. One is the forward movement of uh, ocean wave uh, on the ocean surfaces itself. Here it is not confused with the water movement. The forward movement means it is a wave form and energy is moving ahead whereas the water is remaining stationary at that point. So, the energy only the energy and the wave form is transported not the water particles from a given location. And this is because uh, the wind which are blowing off the surface of the uh, sea tend to drag the uh, water but it forms a cyclic pattern below the wave surfaces. So, the water particles remain there which we will see shortly we will I will explain this for process through a diagram proper diagram. The second type of uh, wave motion is the orbital mo motion of the water particles beneath the uh, what waves. This can be demonstrated to the through a, a diagram here. This diagram shows the water particle movement beneath the uh, ocean waves. The direction of movement of this uh, uh, ocean wave is from left of your screen, sorry, from the right of your screen to the uh, left of your screen. And as you can see uh, on the top, you have the wavelength that is the distance between one crust to another crust. And if you see the water particle movement in, do, uh, in, in entire wavelength, the direction of water particle mo movement is different within a wavelength. Different directions are attained at a different reaches of the entire wavelength. At the crust, it is almost parallel to the direction of uh, wind, whereas it, uh, it is oblique to the wind direction in, in as it moves towards the uh, trough where it again attains the parallel to the uh, wave motion, but in the opposite direction. Again, it is uh, when it is moved from the trough to the crust, again it is uh, oblique in nature or in uh, forming acute angles which are just towards the downside of the ocean wave motion or direction of ocean uh, wave motion. And at the bottom of this, just above the sea bottom, which is denoted as sea bottom, you can see the uh, uh, water ba uh, base or wave base, which is the half the length of the wave. And there the influence of the, uh, the wave ceases and no longer the wave which is experienced at the ocean surface is felt below this zone of wave base. There is no wave uh, motion below the wave base. Now, you can see the sea, uh, sea, sea weeds which are observed uh, which are shown in this uh, diagram and the direction of uh, the water particles changes the orientation of the sea weeds within the uh, sea bottom. Accordingly, it initially it remained uh, straight which is perpendicular to the wave direction, then it is uh, bends which is opposite to the uh, wave direction and then it is compressed downwards. This indicates that the water particles are moving in a circular fashion in an anti-clockwise direction just below the wave particles. And this uh, the diagram further explains this uh, wave particle motion and on your left uh, left part of the screen you can see the orbits of water particles 
and this diameter of um, uh, water particle orbits which are shown just below the crust you can see that if the diameter of this uh, circular anti clockwise circular mo motion is decreasing as you go to the wave base on your right you will see that uh, within the crust of these waves there is no mass transport that means water particles are not move not moving not moving to the within this closed orbit after waves are formed on the other hand the second uh, diagram there is a slight uh, mass transport that is happening that is uh, it is uh, as, uh, what we call it as an open orbit after one period so initially there is in a closed orbit um, there is no mass transport but there are slight mass transport which is happening towards the progressive uh, side or the in the direction of wave transport we'll come back to this when we discuss the stock drift later so stock drifts are as we've seen in an earlier uh, diagram are the water particles that are not quite close to, to the surface so that means orbits move slightly in the direction of wave progression that means the the particles which are not uh, very clo um, closed the as i mentioned in earlier diagram also the previous diagram uh, that that uh, the they are open orbit slightly open orbit which is shown in the uh, right bottom and uh, they move in directly in the direction of uh, wave progression in a slight and there is a slight mass transport occurs here and this slight ma ma uh, for forward movement of water with the passage of time is called stokes drift and normally it is found sh in shallow water near the intercontinental shelf areas and there is a slow mass transport wa uh, of waves occurs at this coast causing uh, near shore current in this sub zone and wave base which i explained earlier with the diagram and basically uh, the size of uh, orbits of water particles decreases with the depth below the water surfaces and such uh, orbits are not detectable at uh, uh, water depth equal to the one half of the length so below which that water will be in relatively calm conditions and there is no effect of wave and exp uh, experienced and that's why the snorkels and scuba divers normally swim below the wave uh, conditions in the oceanic areas where there is resistance offered will be lesser for them and the energy needed for them to swim is lesser because of this conditions lesser wave conditions so what we need to also know is how the waves behave with the depths so we have um, three different types of waves one is deep water wave second is the intermediate water wave third is the shallow water waves and basically uh, the deep water waves are the uh, occurs in deep water columns where intermediate water uh, waves are occurring uh, at a depth between half to 120th of wavelength whereas shallow water waves are occurring very shallow uh, depth which is 1 by 20th of the wavelength now this uh, diagram uh, um, uh, indicates the variations uh, in direction of wave motion and how this uh, waves are are uh, compressed and how the the particle movement are compressed um, in a deep water uh, wave versus shallow water wave in deep water wave they have a more circular motion whereas um, uh, in a shallow water waves they have a more elongated uh, uh, motion within the water column and this uh, and the factor one should know about is the motion of wave is the Uh, the speed or the velocity normally in physics we use the term um, the uh, velocity to indicate the rate at which the particles are moving but in uh, oceanography we uh, we are using the word celerity to denote uh, the motion of a wave at a given time because there is no actual uh, movement of water particles only the wave form is moved so we use the word celerity instead of speed and this is denoted by c is equal to l by t where c is the celerity and l is the wavelength and t is the wave period uh, we should also know about the phenomena called uh, which is occurring in fact area that is the large open seas where the uh, waves are generated 
and uh, uh, they are affected by the storms. The water motion is turbulent with the uh, sea spray, white uh, caps or breaking waves in this fetch areas. So, in fetch areas we no normally experience wave interferences that is basically the integration of several waves with the different length and heights and periods and they are uh, merging to form um, a uh, chaos within the fetch area zones which creates uh, different uh, directional movement of waves. So, this uh, there are two types of uh, wave interferences which is constructive wave uh, interferences and that is destructive uh, wave interferences. And the constructive one sh um, uh, uh, is basically occurs when several waves or tops coincide with each other as is indicated by the uh, uh, diagram here. Whereas, the uh, destructive wave interference occurs when the crust coincides with the uh, trough of a second wave which is leading to a mutual cancellation of forces of wave which is indicated in the diagram here. Uh, in addition to these two types of uh, waves, we have a third type of wave which are basically the complex uh, wave interferences and this uh, occurs because of both constructive and destructive wave, uh, uh, wave interferences occurs almost simultaneously. And this results in a, um, uh, irregular wave forms. So, there is no consistency in shape and size of waves or, um, which are formed because of this complex wave interferences. And this lead to a very chaotic uh, or turbulent uh, wave conditions in uh, especially in the ocean surfaces and sea surfaces. Now, uh, if you coming back to the life cycle, once the waves are formed, it is uh, finally leading to a dispersion. So, we can see in this diagram how the waves are transformed from a deep water to a coastal area, how the uh, waves are transformed. On uh, this diagram, you can see that on the left side of your screen, the fetch areas are indicated or drawn where the winds are st or storms are formed or the sea waves are formed in a either in a constructive, destructive or in a complex form. And as you move away from the source region, like wind, there is an um, like there is a dispersion of uh, wave transformation, which uh, results in a reduction in amplitude of waves which are formed. So, if you see the uh, wave profile uh, at the bottom of this uh, figure, it shows that the height of the crust is highest near the fetch region, whereas the length is uh, more in the open ocean swell regions as you move towards the dispersion, uh, dispersion region. And uh, like and this, this, this is the life cycle of a wave which is occurring in the open seas. And as you see in the, in the previous figure, we have seen the dispersion towards the right side. And, and this dispersion uh, further translate into this uh, uh, wave interference, interference with the coastal regions. And you have, if you observe a coastal area where the water is very shallow, you have a, a intermediate uh, wave region, shallow wave region and a surf zone and a swash zone. And accordingly, the wave length decreases as the wave moves, uh, moves towards the coastal area. Here. Uh, and uh, the wave crust or wave height increases as it moves towards the coastal area. Here we need to note that height increases and the wavelength reduces. And this height increase results in uh, increase in um, uh, breaker or a formation of breakers before it fractures to the coastal region. Now, see wave, uh, uh, what is a brave, uh, wave breaker? Uh, as we know that as the wave moves towards the coastal area, its steep, uh, uh, steepness increases. That means, the ratio between the wave height and uh, uh, wave length uh, increases help to predict instability conditions or you can dis uh, uh, decipher the wave break conditions based on the, uh, the ratio between height and length. Uh, when wave enters uh, shore, wave height increases, whereas the length decreases, which leads to the uh, wave breaker 
against the shores. And the, in the, when the wave uh, break, uh, breaker occurs, the crest overturns the tough region against the coastal area, which leads to the collapse of the uh, crest region. When the wave, breakers, wave break occurs, normally uh, wave height is equal to 1 by 7th of the wave length. And at this condition, the crust um, uh, steepens and become unstable to, um, you know, retard, uh, re uh, retard the frictional effect of the base. There are three different types of uh, wave breakers. Uh, basically, spilling uh, breaker, plunging breaker, and surging breaker. Uh, in the spilling breaker, the upper part of the crust uh, steepens and spills down to the front of the advancing wave because uh, there is a slow loss of energy across the uh, crust zone or the sub zone. In case of pl plunging breaker, the entire front, uh, front of the crust steepens and it leads to curling and a collapse of the frontal region where energy is instantaneously released. Whereas in case of surging breaker, uh, the flat uh, low waves move smoothly against the uh, uh, sloping beach where the energy is very slowly uh, uh, released uh, towards the seaside. And another type of wave which we normally encounter, which we discussed earlier also, is that standing waves, which are basically waves uh, formed that are oscillate up and down, um, like in the case of um, Seiche where there is a fixed point uh, around which there is an uh, up and down movement and this fixed point is called node. And the ex as I mentioned earlier, seats are the best example of this kind of a standing wave. And another concept which one should know is the resonance, it's basically the amplification of a standing wave and uh, this occurs when, um, the, when the, during the periods of uh, forcing element which coincides with the natural periods of oscillation. For example, if there is a tide or if there is a tsunami, if it coincides with the natural periods of oscillation, then a resonance of wave can occur. So that is all about uh, wave uh, conditions. If you have any questions, I have um, Okay, so we talked about the general such kind of the things. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow lecture we will discuss in detail that uh, about uh, ocean waves. waves. Yeah. So, well friends, I hope uh, you have got the basic background on which we will build up the lecture tomorrow. So, with this bar we conclude the lecture. I thank all of you for watching the lecture and on behalf I thank Dr. S. Rikesh for giving such an insightful lecture on this very topic. But thank you very much.